My name is Alberto Lazzarotto and I'm a researcher at KTH, Royal Institute of Technology, Department of Energy Technology. Today I will present this work with title Energy and Environmental Quality Monitoring of a Lecture Building, Preliminary res Results uh, from the KTH Living Lab Testbed AH. This is a joint work together with my colleagues Marco Molinari and Davide Rolando. Energy performance in buildings is critical to sustainability. Monitoring systems are key to understand how systems are operated in reality and identify performance gaps between design and operation. In this work, we look at the monitoring data from 2020 and 2021 of a recent university building located in the main campus of KTH in Stockholm, Sweden. The building is a testbed part of KTH Living Lab the goal of, of the analysis is to identify criticalities in the operation and in the data collection. Before diving into the work, I would like to spend a couple of minutes on KTH Living Lab. KTH Living Lab is a concept that allows research, industry and societal stakeholders to work tightly together in a physical and virtual infrastructure that includes several building testbeds. The idea behind KTH Living Lab is to open up buildings for real-life experiment, conduct research projects and share validated results with different decision makers. To make this happen, KTH Living Lab has three connected functions. Collaboration platform, building testbeds and data and ICT infrastructure. The testbed, ob the testbed object of this presentation is Testbed uh, AH, which stands for Academic Hoos. This is part of the so-called extended test beds, which includes the buildings typically equipped with modern but standard equipment. Testbed Academiska Hus is a university building for lecturing with seven floors and an area of 3,500 square meters. It has an, ex an extensive monitoring system to monitor temperature, relative humidity and CO2 concentration and dedicated energy meters for energy monitoring. Indoor conditions are controlled with balanced ventilation, with heat recovery and radiators. The ventilation is supplied by two air handling units equipped with heating and cooling coils. Heating and cooling are supplied by, district heating, by the district heating networks. Long-term building monitoring requires continuous high-resolution data for extended period, period of times. For this specific building, the resolution of the data and coverage in terms of distribution is high. In the figure on the right hand side, you can see the distribution within one of the floor plans and the uh, construction details showing a sensor embedding the, within the wall structure. The plot below shows monitored temperature, relative humidity and CO2 concentration during 2020 and 2021 in selected rooms. Uh, from the plots, we can see that there are extensive, extended period of time, of times during the monitoring period where no data were recorded. The plan for this presentation is to go through uh, indoor air quality data and energy data and then conclude by summarizing the outcome. Uh, we will start with the CO2 concentration. CO2 concentration provides uh, us with information regarding indoor quality, but it, is, but it is also a proxy for occupancy. In figure, data from selected rooms are plotted both in, in, time, in uh, time series and uh, also as a box plot uh, for synthetic visualization and comparison. The time series clearly shows the effect of the pandemic. In March 2020, the level of CO2 dropped uh, due to restriction and implementation of distant lecturing policies. A large data gap between uh, August 2020 and January 2021 does not show the situation during this period of time. But uh, from January 2021 until the summer, we can see that uh, there is an increase of CO2 that uh, suggests a gradual return to activities on campus. After the summer, break, uh, the level of activity is comparable to pre-pandemic. Um, for all season, the whiskers of hourly CO2 concentration in the box plot is below the threshold of 900 uh, parts per million uh, and only a very limited number of hours have exceeded this value, suggesting the good, good ventilation. 
The indoor temperature time series shows that the temperature are higher on the sixth floor, especially during summer. Comparing the indoor temperature in 2020 and 2021, we can observe the temperature was lower in 2021 in each season. It is also useful to look at uh, outdoor temperature, which gives us uh, an idea of how the two years compares in terms of outdoor conditions. Uh, from this data, we can, uh, you can see that the winter 2021 was significantly colder than 2020. And that summer 2021 had more days over 25 degrees. In this sense, we can say that the year 2020 was milder than 2021. Before looking at the monitored energy data, we need to say that the building had a preliminary monitoring period of one year between October 2018 and September 2019 and then the B-class certification according to the EU standard. We then analyzed uh, monitored energy data for 2020 and 2021. Specific energy use is reported in the bar chart. The table below shows normalized bod energy for 2020 and 2021 and for the year of certification. Specific energy use is much lower in 2020 as compared to 2021. Uh, well, in both years uh, we can appreciate the importance of heat recovery that covers a very large part of the demand. The normalized energy bot in 2020 is significantly lower than 2021 and the one in 20, of 2021 is lower than the one of uh, the energy certification year. Uh, the normalization was done using the heating and cooling degree days. So far we have seen a number of monitoring data, energy flows, indoor temperature, CO2 concentration and outdoor temperature. We have also discussed the impact that the pandemic had on the utilization of the building. We can now connect the data and get uh, uh, a better picture uh, of the energy performance and the indoor air quality condition within this building. Both analyzed years are affected by the pandemic, although the impact in 2020 is larger. As a consequence, the occupancy is lower uh, in 2020 as compared to 2021. Uh, another thing we see from the data is that the outdoor temperature was milder in 2020 as compared to 2021. And of course, both of these factors affected, affected the energy use. Um, we can of course normalize the energy use with the degree days method to uh, compare years with different weather condition. And uh, normalized energy use in 2020 was lower than the one on 2021 and both values were lower than the normalized values uh, from the uh, energy declaration which was pre-pandemic. Uh, further work will be necessary to evaluate the performance in the upcoming years as the building get back to normal usage. Additionally, we can make some observation on the indoor air conditions. A first consideration is that the uh, indoor temperature is lower in winter 2021 as compared to winter 2020. This is likely due to the more rigid temperature during 2021, winter 2021. Um, and the second consideration is that uh, in summer 2021, lower indoor temperature were recording as compared to 2020, despite the, mild, the milder condition in summer 2020. And this is likely due to the increased uh, occupancy and the consequent use of active cooling. Um, this shows that by linking uh, uh, energy uh, along with uh, indoor and outdoor condition, we get a better picture of how the building is operating the, and the quality of the indoor air delivered and the corresponding energy use required. In conclusion, uh, the interplay between uh, the outdoor condition, occupancy utilization patterns, indoor air quality conditions and energy usage can be complex. And the monitor data are necessary for uncovering, uncovering the real uh, operation of buildings and potentially uh, uh, finding problems. Um, and also another thing that we, we saw in this that was interesting is that the data collection systems uh, can fail and, uh, and this, there are potential weaknesses that uh, should be addressed.
Thank you for your attention.